We've tried to save lots of time now for questions. How are we doing for our schedule? Uh, let's go back to the first one. I think we have at least half an hour before lunch, which is very important. Um, so I've got my notebook here. As I mentioned, we're going to do our best to answer your questions. Um, I'm sure there's going to be some we can't, so I'm going to write those down. Um, the only thing I ask is I've got a walking microphone for the three entrepreneurs. Uh, I've got a microphone, and there's another one for somebody if you want to ask a question. We just want to get it all on tape. I just want to add as well, so um, I'm here as the manager, I can answer questions. Neil Carver is here as well, who is uh, partly responsible for designing some of the systems engineering courses that you'll be undertaking. Yeah. Do you, when do you guys want to walk those around? Anybody got a burning question? I know the first one's always tough. Uh, two questions, actually. Uh, the first one is, um, where do you expect these people to be? Are these people in Bristol, or can they be somewhere Depends else? on the pathway. Good question. Depends on the pathway. If you're pathway one, we expect you to be in Bristol. Um, we've got space for you upstairs. So um, pathway one, certainly in Bristol. Pathway two, the accelerator program. Um, if you're embedded with a research group, roughly, as a first guess, half your time here, half your time back with your research group. Um, all of that is flexible, bespoke to be worked out. Um, and then pathway three, the corporate thing, is probably going to be something similar. I imagine um, either it's a small team from a big company that wants to come in and they'll be here for maybe 30, 40% of their time and then back with their company the other bit. Um, we're trying to make it as absolutely flexible as possible. I'm sure there's going to be no two situations are going to be the same. Um, but that gives you a rough gist, I guess. Okay, that's yeah. me. And second question, um, are there any problems when these people start making money, so start producing revenue? Are there any problems because this is a, no? Any problems? No, I'd love them to make money. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of what you're... Is, is it okay for the person to be making money while they're in the program? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, not something, like I say, these are questions we haven't thought about. Um, <laughs> I don't think there's anything that precludes it. So, Richard, can you clarify, do you need generate revenue as part of their company plan? Yes. Um, that would be absolutely fabulous. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wanted to say that, I just wanted to think it through first. No, please go and make money. I mean, this is the kind of question that, that, that comes up and, and people look at each other and say, well, I'm not sure what the answer is. But I mean, the, point, the, the, the obvious thing is there is nothing about that. I mean, the, the, uh, um, there's, there's, no, there's no obvious reason why you can't start making loads of money um, now. <laughs> We've got a good plan. Um, in fact, in, in the innovation programs, there was, a, there was a, a amusing discussion we had at one point, which was, a, was saying, well, supposing one of these plans that's been put together in the second or third year actually turns into a company that somebody wants to pursue, um, what would we do about it? And, you know, hmm. well, <laughs> <laughs> we'd, we'd say that would be great. You know? Although the, one of my colleagues described the program as um, 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 the one that the Facebook inventor wouldn't have bombed out of. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> different ways you can look at this. I mean, the idea is, is, is obviously to try and try and, and give people the rope to go do all these things. And, and there's obviously a possibility that some of these things will actually turn into real ventures sooner rather than later. Yeah. Um, that would be nice. Usually, in my experience, it takes longer than you want, want it to, but <laughs> especially for hardware companies and stuff. But you know, but there may be some opportunities. In fact, in fact, in many ways, it's been said already this issue about about we're not trying to invent new te new new technology here. We're trying to work out how to translate it into businesses. Um, that's an important point. I mean, it, it's it's a lot of the technologies that are actually are ready to actually be translated into business. You, you already know. You know, the question is spotting where stuff that we already know how to do actually intersects with social or, or, or industrial need. As far as I can see, I mean, I, I normally reckon it takes 15 years to get stuff out of the basic research in, in my lab to an actual something on the high street, optimistically. Um, and I'm so you know, it, it's it's usually you've got to be quite careful about take, trying to take stuff that's just too green <laughs> straight out there. Maybe the only other thing to say is um, somebody starting to make money, becoming a success, and saying, "I no longer have time for your program. I'm going to drop out." would be fabulous as well. I mean, if they get three months in and they've got a great idea and they're off and running, go, go make a success of it. So, uh, well, One of the things that we are definitely aware of is that the, um, the, there is, we will be working hard to build uh, effectively the ecosystem around this program because it is not going to be done by just the people that are on the program. I mean, it's going to be by crashing the people, those people together with other disciplines and stuff where there might be opportunities. Because quite a lot of these things in things like quantum uh, sensing and, and whatever, the question is, you know, are the places out there that other people know about, where if you put those things together, you get an opportunity. Um, and uh, th those are the things that, that you need to be looking for, I think.
And we think Bristol has a, a huge uh, role to play as an ideal place for a lot of these things. You're going to hear from some people in the afternoon about why you might like to, after you're done the program, stay in Bristol and try and start this up. But yeah, good questions. Anybody else want to jump in? Go ahead. <coughs> um, regarding development, prototyping, etc., uh, the university obviously has uh, some resources at its disposal uh, with respect to labs and these kind of things. Um, what, what, if anything, will be available through this program? Through the program, um, not much other than our advice in terms of how you negotiate with those research groups. That'll be up to you, I think, is the, is the right answer. If you're embedded with these groups, if you want to um, join with these groups, because that's the other thing. For Pathway 1, I didn't mention it, but I should have, um, you don't necessarily have to come with an idea. 2 and 3, you're probably coming here, you have an idea you'd like to commercialize. 1, you might just know some quantum, know some physics, uh, and not be quite sure academics is for you. Um, and so something we'll also do with those Pathway 1 is we want to connect them up with the quantum landscape. So you might go and join uh, another hub because they don't have enough resource to get it off the ground as a startup, and that might be you then. Um, but that'll be up to you to negotiate all of these terms with them. Um, that's, we'll give you advice, we'll help you out, um, but that'll be you guys to do that, I think, is the safe answer. Can I add? Sure. Um, so with respect to this uh, 200,000 pounds available funding stuff, yep. um, can this go towards prototyping and development? Um, it can. It's meant for, well, basically challenge us for, for what you think it's best spent on. Um, it can go towards simple prototypes, but in the quantum realm, 200K is not going to get you too many places. So things like, it won't get you much more than a cardboard box that you can show somebody, but that's a valid use of it. Um, a GUI on a computer screen or an app on a phone, uh, money to go and travel to potential customers, it's valid for all of those things. Um, a full working quantum technology demonstrator, You'd probably need all of it and then some, so uh, I'd caution against that. But uh, for demos, for that kind of thing, yeah? If, if I can just add to that as well, I mean, um, Chris mentioned travel money there as well. There is um, around £5,000 is already in there for global travel. So along, alongside the budget for um, your salary, there is also the budget for travel and a few uh, parts. Um, for other things on top, as Chris has mentioned, 200k won't go far if you're trying to build an entire new system, but uh, it depends what groups you're working with. Um, I mean, this course is indeed designed for people from the other quantum hubs to come with existing technology, and of course they might want to be applying things over there as well, but we've got travel money as part of the package. Any others? Yeah, go for it. Thank you. Um, how are you going to make this a cent the centre sustainable? Like, what's the business plan for, for the centre? It's a very good question. I'm going to write it down because I don't think I'm going to have a great answer for you yet. <laughs> it's going to be so successful, they're going to want to pour more and more money into it. <laughs> That's what I actually told the EPSO people when they gave us the money. But they've probably heard that answer before. <laughs> I mean, that is a viable answer. Hopefully, well, it is so well, successful. Well, I, I think that, I mean, it's been said already. I mean, we are experimenting with this kind of thing, and, and it will evolve. But what, what, what I can, what is quite ev evident is that, um, that entrepreneurial activity across campuses, especially in the US at the moment, is growing very rapidly. Um, uh, students and staff are thinking very hard about starting businesses. There are more courses and programs opening up that actually encourage that kind of thing and, and provide the educational basis for it, the, the background. Um, so I'm expecting to see more of this. Kind of thing. It, it makes no sense at all to me that the UK is running a huge number of universities that are delivering a purely academic education. Um, it's nonsense. Um, the, we, we do not need half our population educated to be university academics, which is what we're effectively doing. They need to be educated to go do stuff with, 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 with their lives and what, with all the education they're getting. And that's all about um, the kind of things that are in these programs. It's about how to, how to communicate ideas, how to work together in teams, how to bring teams together, how to raise money, how to raise other resources and stuff, and how to identify needs, whether they're social needs or, or industrial needs or, or whatever. And um, I mean, some of our students that are putting plans together not for creating businesses, but for doing social enterprise stuff. You know, that's, that's cool, that's great. Um, um, but I, I'm expecting to see a significant growth of this kind of activity at various levels, postdoctoral, doctoral, 
uh, undergraduate stuff, uh, certainly this university, that's on the, on the agenda. We're, we're planning more of these kinds of programs, both within the curriculum and outside of the curriculum. Um, and the, the, you'll see the same kind of thing happening elsewhere. Um, and actually quite a bit of it is creeping into the schools as well, because they're realizing that it actually matters that teenagers understand this kind of thing. Um, so that's, that's, I mean, you know, th so it doesn't immediately, uh, directly address the, 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 the question you've asked, but because we don't know what funding we got beyond four years, but. <laughs> <laughs> Got in, you want to add? Yeah, I would just say that that question really uh, is the nail on the head, because it's almost addressing that um, uh, challenge or question is almost an implicit guarantee for whoever joins this program, they'll get the best support from the people here. Basically, if the participants don't win, we don't win, and vice versa. So the interests are so well aligned that I can see this becoming a, a, a virtuous circle <laughs> for everybody. Yep. And the other two bits to add are um, key, and this is more the management team is, is inviting in industrial support uh, and sponsorship and, and getting uh, industry and, and VCs and, and them into the program. And the second bit, this is more of a personal thing, but it's, it goes over to the philosophy. I did my PhD in Waterloo. It has inventor ownership. Um, and we don't take any equity, um, which is the same thing Waterloo does, does. They just let you go out and be a success. Um, and just hopefully you remember them at the end of the day. So my PhD was made possible by Mike Lazaridis, going and making RIM a ridiculous success and funding the Institute for Quantum Computing. So um, it's, it's the role model I have, and it's the, what I'd like to pass on. Hopefully we make. 40 of you, a huge success, and just don't forget us at the end of the day. Because I did all these set squared programs, they didn't charge me a dime for any of them, um, and they have my undying loyalty to go and talk, speak, mentor, whatever they need uh, in return. Good question, though. Question back here. Yeah. Um, in relation to your aspirations, obviously there are entrepreneurial hubs around the world like MIT um, that does a great integrated process across the campus between the different networks. How do you aspire to mimicking that success pattern in the actions you're taking in the next couple of years? I think trying to build on the last question, really. So more thinking about how to make it even bigger than quantum, or? Um, well, integrating it with other, like the Media Lab at MIT has got a great process of taking energized and purpose-driven students through a process of developing prototyping and immediately implementing primary research through 24 steps in the Sloan Academy uh, program, Bill all that, that kind of simple process of engendering action yep. through uh, entrepreneurial development at a young age and then adding the integrated company invest and network amongst very structured and process-led formulaic, uh, eventually formulaic patterns of becoming very, very successful is the most successful driven campus in the world. I mean, I guess the one idea... And with the good alumni that feeds back the yeah. money. I mean, this is the idea... Uh, to think of this as more like a bit of a pilot project. I mean, this is sort of newish for the UK. So you've got... We're going to try and pilot it in the quantum regime. You've got the with innovation programs coming in the undergrad. And um, with success there, um, like you say, you want to start building it into the engineering program that's uh, doing classical robotics and artificial intelligence. So for starters, we just want to get this one off the ground um, as a bit of a pilot. Um, but there definitely is aspiration, not only with us, because we've had to chat with sort of the higher ups in the university. Uh, and innovation, enterprise, entrepreneurship is high on their mind. Uh, we just have a new pro vice chancellor. This, this is one of his key pillars for, for Bristol as a whole. Yeah, I mean, we, I have been looking a lot at what goes on in the major American universities, and if you could wave a magic wand and transport the MIT model over here fairly quickly, that would be good. Um, it will take a, a while. <laughs> but, I mean, there are, there are many aspects of what they've done which, which we're definitely um, trying to do. I mean, build, building the network, getting, making sure that we know who our alumni are, not letting them go. This is a classic thing that British, British universities do. They just forget they've got alumni as soon as the guys leave the, the institution. And then, then they're knocking on their door 30 years later when they're rich. You know, whereas actually the people you want often are the, all the networks and connectivity from the people that have just left in the last two or three years. Um, so we're not going to let you go. Once, once you've been here, you'll, you'll, <laughs> you'll, be, you'll be back as mentors. Um, everything we aspire to do in a created integrated network world. And they are, you are at the forefront of developing the path to achieve that. 
So I see this as being a moonshot process. And there's nothing wrong with stating the objectives you want as being really very, very large, because people get behind they that. Are big, they are big, big objectives. Yeah, I think that's right. right. I, yeah. I totally wholeheartedly support it. Uh, you know, it's just that we've got it. We, we got to, so, I mean, be, being in the middle of all this, I've, I've sort of been, been pushing this thing in all, from all directions. You know, it took, it took a while to get the, all the undergraduate stuff going, and that's now got momentum. And but fortunately, you know, it's, uh, the, we, were really, we were quite concerned originally about whether that we were going to get a lot of support for that because of conservatism within schools or parents or whatever. It's actually been exactly the opposite. Um, uh, and I, I, th I think they're probably going to grow very quickly just because of demand that's going to be generated by when the other students see what these guys are doing. Um, but certainly, uh, and then we, we, you know, when you start talking to, to um, the industrial community and potential supporters, they, they, they can see the value in all this stuff. It's just that the, we've had no serious funding stream at all in the UK to support this kind of thing. Um, uh, this is a big, a big, quite a big step for the Research Council. I hope they're going to make some more, and we've got to try and make it successful so they do make some more, um, and try and persuade people to do more. There are other parts of the UK networks that could be contributing to this kind of thing. They just haven't sort of quite got there yet. Um, so we have, have often have these programmes where, where it's OK, you can do something as long as there's a big industrial partner alongside it. Well, that's not no use, because in order for there to be a big industrial partner there, there often has to be something that they, they can buy or license or something. Whereas you know, it's a, a lot of the stuff we're talking about here is we haven't come up with the ideas yet. The, the ideas are, are what we're hoping is going to emerge. Um, but yes, it's a, it's a, moon, it's a moon shot. <laughs> and it is worth thanking you, PSRC, because when we put this bid together in the call, um, we, we creatively interpreted the call. <laughs> it was much more geared towards adding um, systems engineering and a few other things, which is just, just as important. But we saw this massive gap. Um, and to their credit, um, they, they funded it. Um, so yeah, it's I mean, been they, tough they, in the past, but a they, big they, thank you. They, they really thought they were, they were expanding the scope for turning science-trained people into engineers. And, and we basically taken them a whole step further, further. Uh, <laughs> of, of taking scientists, engineers into entrepreneurs. And, uh, and I, you know, I, I don't really understand why we, we, we've got such a big gap between entrepreneurship and stuff and engineering and science anyway, but we, that's the... That's the world we're currently in, um, and we're going to try and break it, change the mold. But what's really cool about the, the with innovation programs is that we've got people who are studying drama with innovation and uh, anthropology with innovation and all that kind of thing, which is which is really good. Um. Any other questions? I have a follow-up question. Uh, you mentioned the four years funding. Um, which doesn't seem like a very long time. How are you going to ensure some quick wins? <laughs> so we get, we've got five years funding for cohorts, um, and a number of the pathways are sort of bespoke. So it's five years worth of funding, uh, first to mention. Uh, and the quick wins come from sort of the, I think, pathway two personally. So you've got all these hubs funded. You've got all this massive resource getting all these prototypes being built. The quick wins are going to uh, come from a few of those people engaging. Um, we're going to connect them up with investors. And so when I did the Set Squared program, for instance, I dipped into their program and then I came back here to Bristol. And now we have a team of four people that uh, um, you're going to hear from one of them, Jake, in the afternoon. Uh, we just incorporated on Friday. And that's going to be your quick wins. Get these hub people in, train them up, let them go back and nucleate 40 teams um, and get those technologies out as quick as possible. Um, or push some of our pathway one towards the hubs. Because the one, again, uh, uh, a gap in the hub funding was there's not much funding towards um, looking at the business cases for all the things that they're developing. And so again, our pathway ones can get pushed out to those hubs and provide exactly what's missing there. Uh, but it's a, a good question. Um, you're, not gonna, you're not likely to get a billion dollar company within four years. No. <laughs> this is a long term <laughs> strategy as well. <laughs> Um, how, how, I mean, I, when I, I was asked this kind of question, how would you know what success was? Actually, uh, I think the, one of the most obvious ways you'll know what, whether it's succeeding or not is, is to what extent it's valued by the graduates, the people coming out the back end of it. It's, uh, it's quite striking that um, it, with, with my undergraduate students on the, the four-year thing, that you, we, we get them back you know, to talk to the students and they, you know, they say, well, actually, I wasn't totally sure why I was doing this when I was doing it, but actually it's been the most valuable thing I did. Um, so you ask them, you know, after they've got out into the big wide world and what they're doing in the companies or whatever they're doing, the most valuable things, teamwork, understanding how the business worked, all that kind of stuff. That those, these are way beyond in their expectation anything to do with the academic program. Um, so, you know, we shall be asking the graduates whether they value this or not. Um, 
um, and hopefully they will value it for whatever reason, because actually, even if it doesn't directly lead to, um, to, to people starting ventures, if they go back into large organisations and start changing the world within the organisation, that's a valid outcome too. You know, in, in, entrepreneurs are pretty important to big companies. Um, so, you know, it doesn't really matter exactly how this plays out, but, but you'll know if it's succeeding from what you, feedback you get back from the, the people coming out of the programme. Um, of course, you know, some of them may have got fledgling businesses going. <laughs> but, it, but it's always, it's very, it's very difficult to assess that because, you know, you can, you can create plenty of businesses and, they, and if they haven't been thought through properly, then they just come and go and they, they've gone bust again. So simply counting the number of startups isn't a good, good, good measure. Um, Any other burning questions? Yeah, go for it, Matt. So, um, well, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, the sort of process of research and development and then startup is uh, not exactly applicable here because this is a huge leap from basically a lot of research still has to be done. And is there a worry, or maybe not worry, but what are the sort of expectations because this is not a stand, maybe all typical way of the way things develop? So the research and development, we're hoping a lot of that has already been done, either in academic groups, in the hubs. It's not about um, developing fundamental science anymore. So you're right, we're sort of skipping the research portion. Uh, the development portion will be sort of half and half. You could well get a couple of pathway ones that the idea, the basic thing's been demonstrated, but they still have to develop a robust system um, that can do it uh, on demand at the push of a button. Um, but it's really that last bit, the, the enterprise and commercial development now that we're adding here. So you're right, we're skipping the research. You're not going to come in here and do research. Uh, it's going to be things that have been demonstrated either in the hubs and other research groups, um, in theory, in, in programming, whatever the case might be, um, and take that forward. So it is existing ideas. How do you commercialize them? Something I briefly discussed with Mark Thompson as well, um, who's in California right now. Um, it's not just about taking a, a, um, a quantum technology. It doesn't have to be something that is rigidly and very hardline quantum mechanically based. There's a lot of scope for working around the, the, the periphery of that technology. Anything that can feed in or support that technological ecosystem is valid within this program. So uh, please don't think it's limited to just something that is purely a, a very um, quantum mechanical based technology. Portable cryogenics that would support quantum technology. If you have a great idea to put <laughs> a cryogenic thing uh, in a suitcase uh, that only weighs a pound, that would be, <laughs> we'd love that. <laughs> and so would the rest of the quantum tech program. Any other? Questions? People are starting to get hungry. Fair enough. One other question I heard in the hallways was around um, a holiday and taking time out. Your university uh, employees, so you have sort of the standard holiday package that they will have, uh, which is quite generous coming from North America. <laughs> so it's something like five weeks here, uh, with the caveat that this is new enterprise creation. So. Uh, if you're coming in expecting to sort of have um, your usual holiday packages, uh, you'll be sorely disappointed. You're going to work your butts off. Um, but I think everybody sort of knows that. Entrepreneurs in startups don't do holidays. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be important. We don't want you guys to burn out, um, but you'll, you'll be coming it's in far, to work far too very hard. Um, but hopefully have a lot of fun while you're working very hard with a lot of very interesting people. <laughs>